All right, mathletes. Today in A5, we're talking about solving quadratics by completing the square. Um, completing the square is really useful for us when we cannot factor uh, quadratics. So first, we got to figure out some tricks here so that we can complete the square. Completing the square, our goal is to get a perfect squared binomial. Going from the quadratic form, we are trying to get here. Well, first, before we get to our final destination, sometimes it's important to look and try and work backwards. So x plus 6 squared, if we multiply this out, okay, well, we're going to get x squared plus 6x plus 6x plus 36. So if we're sitting here with a quadratic and we have x squared plus 12x, we're going to want to add a value to it such that we can get a perfect square out of it. Well, we can see if it's x plus 6 squared, what we're missing is the 36 over here. So we're going to have to add 36 there. And if you think about it, moving backwards from how we factored before, if we want x plus 6 here in our diamond method, and we know that our b value is 12, well, we know to get the top of the diamond, it's what these two are multiplied together, so it's 36. So the same thing with over here. If I do x minus 3 squared, that's going to be x minus 3 x minus 3, get x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9, x squared minus 6x plus 9. Notice I need to grab and introduce this piece in order so it's equivalent to x minus 3 squared. Again, on this one here with x plus 5, we're going to have x plus 5 times x plus 5 is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25, which is going to be equal to x squared plus 10x plus 25. So I have to add 25 here. So what's our rule? What's our general rule for when we want to complete the square? If you notice these b values, if we look at our b value, how do we get our c value, our constant? Well, we have to take our b value, divide it by 2, and square it. This is definitely important to have in your notes. Notice 10 divided by 2 is 5, 5 squared is 25. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, times 9 is, or squared is 9. So let's go ahead and try some examples of solving these out. So solve the following quadratics by completing the square method. So when I complete the square, I prefer to move all my constants and everything to the right side of the equation and leave my squared term and my linear term on the left. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So I get x squared minus 4x. And I'm going to do a plus blank here because I want to introduce a value so that I can eventually get a perfect square. So this is going to be equal to 9. Well, in completing the square, we have to maintain a balance, meaning we cannot add something to this side without also adding it to the right side. So what is that something? So remember our trick. We do b divided by 2 and square it. For this problem, our b is negative 4 divided by 2 and square it, so negative 2 squared is 4. So I add 4 here, and I add 4 here. Well, now, when I factor this, this is going to be x 
minus 2 squared is equal to 13. So at this point, I can solve this equation by using my square roots. I'm trying to isolate this x and get it by itself on one side, and it's equal to something on the other side. The problem before, we had an x squared, and we had an x, and we didn't have a way to isolate that x because we had too many uh, variables to deal with. So first thing we can do is we can square root this side and square root this side. Remembering when we square root something, there's a positive and negative answer. So over here, I get x minus 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 13. To get x by itself, I add 2. I add 2. And I get x is equal to 2 plus or minus the square root of 13. And that is my final solution. There is two not two solutions there. I can choose to leave it as that, or I can write both of them out as x2 plus the square root of 13 and 2 minus the square root of 13. So I was able to solve for that quadratic without having to factor it. All right. So my next problem, 2. What's nice is I already have my x squared and my 6x on one side and that constant over on the right. So first thing I do is a little scratch work off to the side, b divided by 2 and square it. So for this one, it's 6 divided by 2 squared is 9. So I'm going to do x squared plus 6x plus 9 equals 3 plus 9. Remembering, I can't just introduce this 9 without compensating it on the other side of the equation as well. So now, if I've picked my 9 right, that should factor nicely for me to be x plus 3 times the quantity x plus 3, or our perfect square, x plus 3 squared, is equal to 12. At this point, again, I can solve this by taking the square root of both sides. Again, always remember, you have a plus and minus the square root of 12. Square root of 12 can be simplified to square root of 4 times the square root of 3. I'm identifying a perfect square. Square root of 4 is 2. Square roots of 3. So then as I subtract 3 over here, subtract 3 over here, my final answer is x equals negative 3 plus and minus 2 square roots of 3. And that's my final answer. All right, number 3, we're making it a little harder here because we have an a value. So again, first thing I'm going to do is just get my x squared and x by itself on one side. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. 4x squared minus 8x equals 5. At this point, I'm going to look for a GCF. I'm going to notice that I have a 4. I can factor out in parentheses x squared minus 2x plus blank, because I know I'm trying to get a completed square there, is equal to 5 plus 4 times blank. Now remember, because this blank would end up being multiplied by 4 here, we also have to have 4 times this blank over here. It's the most common mistake I see. From here, again, I'm going to take my b value, negative 2, divide it by 2, and square it. It's 1. So I'm going to add a 1 here, and I add a 1 here. Technically, that 
is going to be multiplied by 4. So this ends up being a perfect square. So 4 is on the outside, and then I have x minus 1 squared is equal to 5 plus 4, which is 9. At this point, I can solve this quadratic out. Isolating my, here I want to isolate my binomial. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I get x minus 1 squared equals 9 fourths. Square root both sides. When I square root both sides, I remember I have a minus and a positive. So plus and minus square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So I can simplify that by doing the radical of the numerator and denominator independently. Last step, add 1 to both sides. So I get x is equal to 1 plus minus 3 halves. That's my final answer. All right, so our next one, I'm going to shrink this up. So go ahead and move my constant over for number four. I get x squared plus 3x equals 4. And at this point is when I really like to leave my blanks. So plus blank equals 4 plus blank. Well, 3 doesn't divide by 2 ni nicely, but we still can't freak out if we don't have integer values. So when we square 3 halves, we are going to get 9 fourths. So I add, because so I got 9 fourths here, I add 9 fourths on the left, keep the balance by adding 9 fourths on the right. So this will end up being a perfect square. My B value, so when I factor this out, this term is always the square root of that term. Because when I double distribute, this times itself is that. So if you do the square root of 9 fourths, this must be 3 halves, or 1.5. And I know 1.5 plus 1.5 is 3. Okay, So this is now all equal to that. And on the left, i got to do 4 plus 9 fourths. Well, I want to get a common denominator here. So 4 can be 16 fourths plus 9 fourths, which is 25 fourths. Now I want to solve for my x value, so I'm going to square root both sides. So I get x plus 3 halves equals the square root of 25 over 4, remembering plus and minus. And then I have x is equal to, so subtract 3 halves from both sides, minus 3 halves plus, or minus, square root of 25 is 5, square root of 4 is 2. So at this point, I'd like to combine, because we don't have any radicals or things, I'd like to simplify my fractions here. So if I, if this was a plus 5 halves, negative 3 plus 5 would be 2 over 2, or 1 as a solution. The second one, if it was negative 5, be x equals negative 8 over 2, which is equal to negative 4. So I also got two solutions there. That concludes our video tonight. Make sure you highlight questions and bring them to class tomorrow.